Okay, I am back again for another installment of What's New? What did I get in recently? So, um, I broke these up. This one is going to be all focused on um, some recent Christian rock and metal that I got in. So, if that's not of interest to you, you are forewarned. But anyway, um, I got a few more uh, of the Limited Run vinyl series from Gerda Music that came in this week. Um, and some CDs. So, I wanted to run through those. Now, so interesting, interesting is the fact that the mail carrier delivered these on Monday, Memorial Day, the holiday. Uh, I'm like, what the heck? They were scheduled to be here Tuesday, and all of a sudden, I get a package on Monday. So, let's jump right into it. Um, first off, we'll go past, go through this one. This is The Brave. Now, this album came out, I remember when this album came out, um, it just struck me. It's, it's, it was just like almost the perfect blend of that kind of arena rock the bon jovi the uh the def leppard of the time it was just it was just such a solid release so it has been reissued on vinyl and cd it is a beautiful look at all these splatter vinyls beautiful red yeah they're both the same um and as some of these have been it's it's in a sleeve lyrics on one side story on the back this was recorded around the time of the sh the riots out in california and so it has a story about this in 92 about how that was happening uh during the time frame so uh and some of the how that affected some things um yeah artwork is great the only thing that's missing which is on the cd was there is and they talked about it on the back here there was a song they took the first song off the album and remixed it with uh stripped it down a little to make it a little more mellow um, because of the tension of the riots they just mellowed out a little bit it's on the CD it's on the digital tracks I believe I'm pretty sure but it's not on the vinyl but you know that's it's just a little throw in there so I just can't I encourage you to check this out I'm sure you can find clips online um, they're just a really solid band they did put a second album out that I don't know a whole lot about I mean I have a copy but I don't know it just seemed like it went under the radar at the time. Okay, what else came in? We have both releases by Mastodon. Now, no, this is not the Mastodon that most of you may have heard of that is a band, a heavy band of the past, whatever, 10 years plus. Um, spelled differently, Mastodon like in the elephant, which as you can see. And if you know anything about who this is, you'll understand why Mastodon and the elephant uh, make sense. So this is a band uh, project by John and Dino Elefante. Get it? Elephant Mastodon. Now, you probably are aware of um, John Elefante. He was a singer for Kansas on uh, a couple of their albums. Play the Game, big video they had on MTV back in the day. That's John um, so he was in that time frame in the early 80s. Uh, and then they went on to be really great producers. John still releases music all the time. There has been an album called Mastodon 3 that was released in the past five or six years. Um, it turns out it's really more, and it's been released twice. It's been released as Mastodon 3 and as a John Elefante solo album because it's really more of a John Elefante. He does a lot of music. He still does a lot of music. He still has bands. Uh, releases over the years so he's still musically inclined his brother uh, Dino and him had a studio out in California they did a lot of producing of a lot of bands a lot of Christian bands back in the day um, were produced by them so you'll see their names over usually back in the day we could look at it and if it was released by John Dino Elefante we knew it was going to be top-notch musically we also knew it was going to be lots of layered vocals very commercial and uh, they took some bands that we saw as being heavier than they were heavy that once they got the polished trip through pachyderm records pachyderm get it there too macedon pachyderm um pachyderm is it records that's the elephant connection elephante brothers pachyderm records once they went through pachyderm studios they were going to come out on the other side uh a little different the edge is going to be gone. They're going to be a little more commercial. But they did a lot of good for a lot of bands. Really put them over the top as far as the quality. 
Um, this was an actual project. Lots of different singers, lots of different musicians with the Elefante Brothers involved. Um, one of the top vid songs that was released from this album that is still probably the heaviest song on the album and probably every one of my favorites is the opening track at the jungle out there. They had the singer at the time for the band X Center. They were brand new on the scene. Um, X Center had a real had a sound on their early cassette that I have, their demo cassette. They sound just like ACDC. Just it was like just solid ACDC. Then when they came out with their album Get It, they had a mixture of ACDC, a little Def Leppardish, but the vocals are kind of got that scratchiness of a little ACDC. Well, on this album, he still got the scratchy vocals, but on this, it reminds me a lot more of a Cinderella sound. Um, so he sounds more like that style of raspy singing. But then they've got a bunch of other musicians on here, um, and it's just a, it's a very arena rock, anthem -y, lots of uh, just layered, beautifully, just beautiful stuff. I love the picture on the back. This was not on the original. It's like a real, real elephant that's been touched up. I thought that was really cool. And it's got a bonus track, Wasn't It Love, which was the first appearance we heard of Macedon when they appeared on the California Metal album before this album that's where like who's Macedon and you know they they had that track on California Metal so that was nice to have then they came up with the second album didn't have quite as many of the you know it still had a, a various amount of people um but it sounded more cohesive like a a, a band um and just you know been remastered it's beautiful it sounds great uh just love it of course these are on splatter too that's really pretty um I encourage you to check these out. There, you, I'm pretty sure you can get sound clips of these to check them out. Yellow splatter. Um, like I say, these were th these first two Mastodon albums, in my opinion, are a little edgier, uh, a little more energetic than the third one, which is good. The third one just came out, like I say, a couple years ago, so we're talking decades later. But it, you know, it's a different feel. Um, and this stuff is really, you know, just really good arena rock for the days for the late 80s uh just great stuff and if you're worried about you know the whole fact that this is religious christian type stuff it's really you're not going to find a lot of blatant preachy type stuff on here um i think that you would you know glory bound you know there are some things on the first album and it's on here but it's not i don't think it's real preachy it's not preachy like some of the bands in the 80s were all right moving on cds these came in from Rocks yesterday, got these two releases, they've been talked about online and everything. XL and the DVD, XL and Death Before Dishonor. Um, first album came out back in the 90s, had a lot of metal guitar players, Jimmy Brown, Deliverance, people crucified, lots of guests. Um, and so he's more or less a rap singer, guitar player, but he's a, a metal guy. So it's like heavy metal rap, rap. I don't want to say rap core, but um, just hard rock. With he sings, but he also raps a little. Not uh, it's hard to say rap. Spoken word. Um, anyway. I've shown his stuff before. His he's had a couple albums out recently. So he ninety three released an album, then he released another one after that. That mm, I think the, I 
God, can't remember much about it. I don't have that one. Um, and then Silence for a long time. And then in 2012, I think it was, came out with two albums. Then they were reissued. No, I take that back. In 2016, came out with two albums. And then, I like two years later, Rocks put them both out as a single double disc set. So this is, you know, new music since then. Um, I have been listening to this over and over. His stuff I just really enjoy. I just really enjoy this. And this one is cool. Great stuff. I can't, I encourage you to check it out. He's just, it's just really good. Um, Michael 2, follow up to Michael. The first album, um, Battle Rages On, or whatever that first album was, uh, just released a few months back on Rocks. And then they, this was an album that was never released. The band recorded it and never really released it until now. So um, the other one, you know, was a cassette they released back in the day, and then they remastered and put it out with some bonus tracks. And so this was a tape uh, or a recording they did back in the day that never was released. The band broke up, and now it's out on CD, and it's got a few uh, bonus tracks. So it is a well-rounded 12 song. Um, metal, uh, a little more guitar heavy than the first album because they had a keyboard player. Now they have no keyboard player, so it's a little more guitar oriented. Um, and so it's a customer, you know, it, it's a self-released. It's got that sound of a self-released uh, album for the time. Um, but, you know, and it's it's kind of a commercial hard rock so anyway, yeah, I've been digging it. Been digging it. Um, so now I have both Michael and Michael Two. This came from overseas. Um, the Diamond Rock series, Prague AOR Records. Rosanna's Raiders before and after the fire, 1985 to 2019. Now, uh, any of the Christian fans from the 80s know that uh, Pure Metal Records. Released a band called Rosanna's Raiders. It's a female fronted Rosanna, uh, female fronted band. And I remember the day when they released those and we got them. Um, everybody scratching their heads thinking, why did Pure Metal Records sign this band when they were clearly not metal? Rock, borderline hard rock at best. Um, and I'm trying to recall now, and I can't remember because it was so many years ago. They had two albums, and I can't, was the first one, were they both on Pure Metal, or was the first one on, like, Refuge, and then they b bounced them. But anyway, point was, they were on the Pure Metal label, at, at least at one point, I'm thinking both of them, when they were not, at the time, considered metal. Um, what this is, and so, so it says 85 to 2019. None of the tracks on here are from those two albums, so you're not getting a CD reissue of Rosanna Raiders, um, those first two albums, which I would like to get on vinyl. And I almost bought one the other day. I found one for like $16, but I didn't. Um, so even though they weren't metal, they were still a part of that time frame in the 80s that uh, we listened to them and liked them. And so anyway, I was I jumped at the chance to get, a ch to get this in my hands. What this is, is it's recordings, basically, that weren't on those albums that, that came after the album. So it's 2000, well, it says 85 to 2019. Essentially, the first CD is 15 tracks that were recorded. Uh, so they had an album out in 88 and 89. So um, what this does is picks up after those two albums, 88 and 89. So the first CD is 12, 15 tracks that were recorded after that. She continues doing music. They continue playing. And she's put out singles and tracks and things along the line. So you've got a whole 15 songs worth of tracks recorded after those two albums from 1990 into the 2019. So th this is basically a 15-song album of newer stuff since those two albums. But then disc two is an 11-song track of their 1985 self-released cassette. Or tape or whatever it was back then I, I doubt it was on vinyl um, so it's kind of like filling in the gaps you've got a 1985 tape I've had a copy of it for years but it's nice to have on CD it was just a bootleg I had um, 11 songs from then then they got signed put out two albums which you don't have here and then she's continued to record with the band song since then so you've got everything but those two albums very neat Kind of fills in the gaps of everything you're missing from Rosanna's Raiders if you had those other two albums. Um, very nicely done. 
lots of cool stuff to you know cds two of them of course nice booklet with with material and lyrics and stuff and pictures and anyway um where are they from again australia uh Rosanna's raiders is from overseas totally going to blank female fronted hard rock trio from australia i thought i was pretty sure it was australia anyway so yes that came in a few days ago and it is great stuff it like i say it's just neat i'm kind of a completist so it was really neat to have something that is kind of completing the rosanna's raiders catalog that's all for now um i think i'm done this is it this is the final new video for the stuff that came in since and throughout the weekend of memorial day weekend so anyway stay safe be strong rock on see you later